the Viet Cong rely heavily on mines and booby traps to knock out vehicles and kill their enemies. To be hit this way, all you have to do is be there and be careless. Most VC mines are installed at random along routes of communication. Mines and booby traps have also been found at likely helicopter landing sites. On footpaths and trails. Along hedgerows. On fence gates. And on rice paddy dikes. VC mines may be hidden in high grass or on a footbridge likely to be used. The VC rarely mines or booby traps those areas farmed by day. He does mine sandy ground that can't be farmed. Burial sites. Paths leading to and from the jungle in which he disappears so easily. These are some of the explosive devices the VC plant as mines and set as booby traps. Good use is made of our own equipment, even our trash. Many of their devices are homemade. They all kill. The VC also have more primitive devices. Bamboo is plentiful. Openly harvested, the sharpened stakes can be hardened in a fire, coated with urine or excrement to cause infection and used to build a deadfall set by a tripwire to drop on the unwary enemy, who might be you. Bamboo is also used to cover and arm man traps found near fences, near hedgerows, and along trails. The cover is designed to give way beneath your weight. This is another man trap spiked with punji stakes, short lengths of split bamboo, knife sharp, and planted to impale you as you fall. Your fall or later movement on these stakes may further trigger a grenade with which the pit is booby trapped. Small VC anti-personnel devices have been found where foot traffic is expected. Be on the alert for any disturbance to the ground that lies ahead of you. These bullet traps are triggered by pressure. Simple bullet traps like this can kill. They can also be avoided and, once found, easily disarmed. Watch out for tripwires, too. The VC use these fish line tripwires frequently to trigger grenades set up as anti-personnel devices wherever troop movement is expected. This tripwire leads to a fragmentation grenade planted in a tree along the trail. Placed in a can small enough to hold in the safety lever, the safety pin on this grenade has been removed. The tripwire simply pulls the grenade from the can, releasing the safety lever. Some VC devices are even more ingenious. Anchored with bamboo or wooden sticks, this tripwire leads to a rock suspended from a branch. The rock is attached to the pin of this grenade. Tripped by foot, the weight of the falling rock pulls the pin to activate the grenade. This vertical trip wire leads to a bamboo arch type anti-personnel device armed with a grenade placed high enough to cover a wide area. Only careful observation can lead to the detection of traps like this before you're trapped. Only your careful observation can detect and help you to avoid a nail pressure type grenade mine like this one planted along a path or trail and almost, but not quite, invisible.
grenades are also used by the VC to mine possible helicopter landing sites. The charges are mounted high on poles placed around the perimeter of the landing area and strung together in such a way that as the helicopter lands, the grenades will be detonated one after another. Care should be taken in detonating these grenades. Proper use of a grappling hook and rope will enable you to accomplish this from a safe distance. VC equipment is often planted conveniently along a path or trail to catch the eyes of souvenir hunters. This equipment is often booby-trapped. Obviously booby-trapped VC equipment should be examined and destroyed by demolition men who know what they're doing. VC equipment after thorough examination by qualified personnel and found not to be booby-trapped, should be removed under proper supervision for intelligence purposes. As a general rule for survival, be careful with all abandoned VC equipment. This demonstration shows how a VC flagpole could be booby-trapped with a grenade. To increase their chance of success, the VC often remain in the area waiting for our approach. target of choice appears within range of the VC's electrically detonated device, he simply closes a circuit charged by a pair of our flashlight batteries, stolen or thrown away as trash, and his mine explodes. If you discover a mined or booby-trapped area, send for the experts. Don't try to do this job yourself. It's one for trained demolition personnel who know how to work with explosives. got other fish to fry. For heavily mined areas, the engineers have the heavy-duty LVTE with plenty of muscle and protective armor to dig safely down and churn up anything that's there. The fish line tripwire commonly used by the VC may lead to more than a grenade. Mortar shells are often used in anti-personnel devices. This fence gate was booby-trapped with a mortar shell. Again, making use of a grappling hook and rope, the charge is properly detonated from a safe distance. Sometimes, even heavier charges are used in VC booby traps. Under the matting of this village hut, a 90 millimeter shell was found set to go off on pressure. Artillery shells and other heavier charges are also used in anti-vehicular mines detonated by various pressure type devices. You may encounter these wherever the road surface or the open ground permits their use.
before moving into any area that may have been mined by the VC, a careful search should be made with mine detectors. Sometimes you can see where VC mines have been emplaced, their presence given away by an unnaturally regular pattern of cracks. Or by a too regularly shaped rise or depression in the surface of the ground. The work of locating and uncovering these mines should be left to the engineers. So should the job of demolition. We have some commercially manufactured anti-vehicular pressure type mines. Notice the way in which this mine is covered. At first, the earth will be fresh and dark around the bamboo mat. Later, this fresh earth will dry and settle, leaving a regular pattern of markings on the ground around the edges of the mat covering the mine. Look for these signs of danger. Whenever uncertain of whether or not an area is mined, call for the engineers who can easily detect even well-concealed mines and dispose of them properly. mines are of the homemade variety made up of standard half-pound box of TNT, encased or wrapped in almost anything available. Much use is made of our own equipment, even, remember, of our trash. Extreme caution should be used in approaching electrically detonated mines. This man, remember, may remain in the area to wait for a target of his choice. If you're close enough to discover the wires leading to a mine, you're close enough to be a target. Cutting the wires, one at a time, will prevent electrical detonation. The mine itself should be destroyed in the same way pressure-type mines are blown. Many VC mines, like that prepared with this mortar round, are rigged for detonation with pressure-type devices made of bamboo or of wood. The Viet Cong are adept at improvising pressure-type triggering devices and mines like this shoebox anti-personnel mine. Small, but deadly. This shaped charge in a metal canister is another improvised mine of the type placed along a road or trail by the VC. Although this mine can be electrically detonated, it is set off with two boards fitted with contacts and held loosely apart by pegs or blocks of wood. Foot pressure will bring the boards together to make contact and detonate the charge. Notice again the regular pattern of the ground covering this device, indicating danger. Something has been buried here. Wires may also set off noisemakers warning the VC of your approach.
mines and booby traps have one disadvantage for the VC. The presence of these weapons must be marked for the protection of VC troops and neutral civilians. The Vietnamese know what areas are dangerous. Watch them as they move around. Avoid the places they avoid. Follow the paths they take. Proceed with caution wherever you go. And look for VC signs and markers that may tell you what areas are mined or booby-trapped. Natural materials are often used to mark mined or mine-free areas. Three rocks set beside a road may mean mines ahead. Three sticks on a road may also mean the area ahead is mined. An arrow mounted on a stick points to danger, mines or booby traps. The feather points to safety. Four tufts of grass, each tied in a knot and marking the corner of a square, indicate the center of the square is mined or booby trapped. A line of wedges driven into a stump points to a trap. A curved bamboo stick on the road. Or two sticks placed to form a V point to a punji trap in the area. Sticks tied and stacked like teepee supports cover spike traps. These sticks are removed by the VC when they know we're approaching. A stick shaved flat along one side and stuck in the ground at a 45 degree angle with the flat side up points to a mine one meter from where the flat side enters the ground. A stick or pole resting on the fork of another stick points to a danger zone. Signs reading Min or Cambo indicate mines or booby traps in the immediate area. Three stones or sticks, one on each side and one centered on a road, mean danger ahead. Don't use this road. You've seen the ingenuity of our enemy and how he uses mines and booby traps to his advantage. The alert, suspicious, and trained Marine can avoid these devices. Stay off trails and away from places you sense he's likely to have booby-trapped. Wherever you go in his country, be alert. Use good patrol tactics. And watch for the little things that don't seem natural. Don't panic. You'll never encounter VC mines and booby traps as concentrated as you've seen them here. But they're around. Assure your own safety when it comes to the detection and demolition of all VC devices. Stay on the alert and stay suspicious. Know your enemy, get gone, and his application of mining and booby trap techniques.